Hello class, in this video we are going to be going over the ls command for listing files and directories. Let me go full screen over here. Perfect. So the ls command is used for listing the contents of a given directory or to view in the file itself, specifically um, to view some uh, information about the file. Whenever you're navigating the file system, the ls command is like your eyes. You want to see what's inside somewhere, you use the ls command to see what the folder contains. ls can be used with arguments or without arguments. And as you recall from our class, you know, when you provide an argument to a command, it enhances its functionality. When ls is used without no arguments or nothing, it simply, mean, it simply lists the content of where you currently are. So it lists the present working directory. ls has a lot of options that make it a very useful command. If you ever want to see the options that the ls command, you can always read the manual page by typing man and ls. And this page has all the information about the ls command. If you want to exit this page, you press the Q letter on your keyboard as it sets in the bottom of the terminal. Um, one of the neat things about the ls command is its ability to sort the, the the data that you're viewing, the content of the directory, in a specific ways. You can sort them by the last time a file was modified, by its extension, by the size, uh, you know, by name, which is the default in alphabetical order, and you can reverse the alphabetical sort as well. So let's uh, practice a little bit with the ls command. So what I'm going to do is that I am going to go to my cd user share actually i think i have some stuff in the downloads directory okay so let's say that i want to see what's inside the downloads directory so if i type simply ls and as you can see my present working directory is the downloads folder if i type ls it's going to show me what i have inside the downloads folder for instance if i open a file manager you are going to notice that in my downloads folder i have a picture and that is exactly what ls shown me over here if you want to see um, everything including the files that are hidden and by the way in the linux operating system you hide a file by providing a period in the beginning of its name for example if i let me make a copy of this copy paste if i want to make this picture hidden all i have to do is rename it and add a period at the beginning now the, per the problem with this is that unless you allow the system to, de to show you hidden files by default, it will not show them to you graphically. And the same thing happens in the terminal. If I type ls, notice that only one picture appears. However, I know that I hidden another picture over here. If you want to see it graphically, you press Ctrl and H in your keyboard and that will show you the hidden files. However, ls is still showing me only one. If you provide the, the minus A flag, so ls minus A, it shows you not only the regular files, but it also shows you the hidden files that start with the period, and it shows you these two symbols over here. The first period represents the current directory. Two, two dots represents the previous directory. If you would like to list only the hidden files and regular files, avoiding these two, you can always do ls and uppercase A. And notice that in this output, we don't see the previous directory or the current directory. Uh, another useful option of the ls command is that when you give it a directory, it doesn't show you the current directory, but the directory that you specified. For instance, I am inside my downloads directory right now. If I want to see what's inside user share themes, it will list this directory instead because it was provided as an argument. And I can add options to that as well. Let me see everything, including what's hidden. Let me go inside Yaru, for example. And as you can see, that's how, we, how the ls command works. There are other options of the ls command as well that you can implement. And in your lab, you're going to be able to work with, 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 uh, with some of those options. For example, if you want to do a long list, meaning I want to see the files that are in the directory, but I also want to see information about that file, you can do ls minus l. And this, is, and this is short for long listing. And as you can see, not only shows me the file, but it gives me some metadata about the file. Now, let's take a look at what that metadata means. So 
In the beginning, we see a bunch of letters over here and dashes. Now, these are the permissions of the file. If you see a D at the beginning of the entry, it means that that is a directory file. If you see a hyphen, it means that it is a regular file. The permissions are divided into triplets. So the first three are read, write, and execute for the user. Then it goes the group, and then it goes other. If you see a hyphen, it's because it doesn't have that particular permission. There is going to come a lecture on, on permissions in Linux, and that's when we're going to talk more about that. But for now, understand that the second field in the output of the ls-l command represents the file permissions. Then the second is the hard link counts. Again, this is something that I'm going to talk about later on. Uh, it's too early for that. When we get there, we will come back to this graphic. Then you have who owns the file, then the group that owns the file, then you have the size of the file, and then you have the modification time. And finally, you have the file name. Now, when the file is small, the file size here doesn't really matter much. But when the file is large, sometimes you want to read this in a more human-friendly format. For that, we use the ls, minus l, and then the h option for human-readable. As you can see, now it shows 60k instead of 60,776k. Let's clear our screen real quick. That just explain what I just showed you before. Now here are some, some more examples of the ls command. If you want to list all the files in a given directory and you want to sort it by the last time the particular file was modified, you can use the minus t option. For example, I want to list everything inside my home directory and I want to sort it by the last time it was modified. Let me do a more specific directory as a second example. I know that I have a directory called icons. On my, on my home directory, it's a hidden directory, you probably are not going to have that one. As you can see, if I provide the L option, right, because I want to see the, the, the metadata of the files, A, so, to show, so that I can see hidden files, and T, because I want to sort everything by last modified. Notice that the last item that got modified were in October 7, today, but these ones were modified on January 19. So these ones appear first. If you want to uh, list all the files but sort them by file size, you can do the capital S option. If you want to sort them by file extension, you can do the X. If you want to reverse the sorting, you can do my lowercase r. If you want to do it recursively, which means that if it finds a folder, if it finds a subfolder in the particular folder you want to list, it's also going to list the subfolder. For example, if I do minus R over here in the icons directory, notice that the icons directory has three files over here, but it also has three folders. If I do minus R, it lists everything, but it also goes inside the material light cursors directory and it lists what's in there. It goes inside cursors and it lists what's inside cursors and it's so on. Okay, if you want to see the options of the ls command, you can either explore the man page or you can do ls hyphen hyphen help. And it's going to give you a, summarized, uh, a summary of the, of, the hi of, the, um, of the manual and all the options listed one after each other and what they do. What I suggest you do when you're working in your lab is that you open one terminal window with the help and then you open another terminal window. I'm using the Tilex uh, terminal and you have it installed in your system as well. And you use the other one to complete your lab. You know, in that way you always have a reference over here of all the options and you also have a workspace over here. Okay, we're going to practice now. So what I want you to do is, I want you to change your current directory to the downloads folder. So we're going to do, we're going to go here, we're going to do CD. Downloads, clear, and now we are going to, oh, I closed, the, closed something I shouldn't have, we're still working with that, so I'll put this on here, this side,
And what we're going to do is that we're going to download these pictures using wget, which means webget, which is a command that allows us to download files from the internet. So I'm going to do wget, and I'm going to type this URL. So https robertalberto.com slash linux.gif. Did I move that file? Up, oh, sorry, public. Slash public linux.gif. Perfect. And we're going to download dancing public dancing potato.gif. And we're also going to download penguins.gif. And sample that PDF and Annabelle Lee which is a very beautiful poem perfect let's do clear and let's see what's inside the downloads folder I have all my files over there so instruction number two says list all the files in your downloads directory so since we're doing a simple list all we have to do is type ls and then enter since we are already in the downloads directory, we don't need to specify the directory because that's what we want to list. Now, list all the files in your downloads directory, including hidden files. And as you recall from earlier, all we have to do is provide the minus A option or uppercase A if we don't want to see the previous directory and the, the directory that. long list all the files in your downloads directory and for doing a long list we provide the minus l option then long list all the files in your downloads directory with human readable file sizes and sorted by last modified now over here i'm asking for three things first i want you to long list so you're going to give me the minus l option then I want you to make a human readable. So that's going to be the H option. And then I want you to sort it by last modified. So that would be T as you saw earlier. And as you can see, you can combine all of these options to achieve a desired output. Now, I, the solution to this particular practice is in the following slide. So I'm going to let you watch it and, and, and practice it as much as you want to keep the video short. Okay, here are the commands that we used over there, and special notes. The first step to mastering the Linux command line is mastering how to move around. You can learn all the complicated commands you want, but, after, but if you don't master moving around the file system, PWD, CD, and LS, if you don't build that mental, mental frame that you are in a maze and you can move around that maze freely, you will not succeed of mastering the command line. You are never going to really be good at it. You need to be able to move around freely the same way that you do it graphically. And that comes with a lot of practice. So make sure that you practice. That's one of the things that I see people fail in the midterm over and over and over. Because they just never practice. You have to. You have to be able to move around. Okay. Here is a cheat sheet on absolute and relative path. Uh... And here is a cheat sheet of the ls command as well that you can download from the link that you see over there. Uh, you can add this to your notes and it is a good idea to add it to your notes. You can also print it and I will allow you to use this on your midterm as well. That concludes this video. Um, if you have any questions about the lab, please reach out to me in Slack. If you have any questions about the video, you can also either leave it in the comment section or you can reach out to me in Slack. See you in class.